Welcome to Virtualize Everything. So, in tonight's video, we're going to look at creating a USB drive that has data on it, and we're going to take you through that entire process. But the real intent of the video is actually to look at adding that drive into Proxmox after we've created it and recover that information from it. So, it's not as straightforward as actually just mounting that drive with the web interface. There's no way to mount a drive that has data with the web interface. For some reason, it just doesn't work. I don't know if that's an oversight by the developers of Proxmox or if there's some intention to it, but we are able to get around it and mount the drive in with the command line. So that's what this video is about, learning to do the entire process. And I take you along with a pretty fresh perspective. So I haven't added a drive with the command line mount in over a year, and I don't know if I've ever added a USB drive in this manner. I may have, but not one that I remember. So with that, Let's get to the video presentation. All right, so let's take a look at setting up a USB drive as storage on Proxmox using the web interface. Now this really should be the exact same steps as when we take and set up a standard drive on Proxmox. But anyways, I have to set one up for another demo and let's take and take the opportunity to actually try and do this. So here's SDB, which you can see is a USB drive. And let's go ahead and wipe it because we don't want anything that's on it. Okay, so the drive's been wiped, and let's initialize it with GPT. All right, then we can come down to directory, and we can create directory. And you see it automatically brings it in. File system, let's choose ext4, and we're just going to call it USB here. And we're going to create. And if we want more information, we can actually click details here. All right, and you can see our drive shows up here on the side, just like it would with a standard SATA or SCSI or standard hard drive in your system. It's taking a minute to recognize it. That's all pretty standard. All right, so now let's go ahead and configure this because we just want some backups on it. So we're going to go to data center and storage, and we can choose USB and hit edit, and we can uncheck everything but backup files. Now, if you wanted to put something else on this drive, just like with a standard hard drive, you just highlight the one, or you can leave them all highlighted if you want. That's fine. And you hit OK. And I don't think I have anything good here to move over for a backup. So let's go ahead and click Create CT real quick here. I'm just going through this real quick. There's really no rhyme or reason other than I just want a container. All right, so we can... Now back this container up and back it up to USB. And then we can back this up. All right, so our backup file should be created. We go here to USB and backups. We can see our backup file. Now to remove this drive, we're gonna come up here to data center. We're gonna click yes. Then we should be able to come down here to disks and directory. And we don't wanna remove the stuff off the drive in this scenario. So we're just gonna do that. And then type USB and remove. All right, so the drive's fully removed from our system now. So over here, this is our Proxmox instance that we virtualized for the rest of the demos on this drive video. So let's pass this USB device into that and add. It looks like I'm actually gonna have to do a reboot because it's in yellow. All right, so because it's been a night and I've forgotten the IP address, 230. All right, so here's our demo system. Here are the disks that we added in in other parts of this video or other parts of another video. Anyways, here's our disk and we should be able to see, hopefully, oh yeah, that's right, we need to reboot. That's what we were coming here because this is still yellow. So let's go ahead and reboot this system now. I'll be back here in a minute when the reboot's done. Okay, so we've passed the USB drive into the virtual machine now, and we've rebooted it so the USB pass-through works. As you saw previously, it was yellow, which means that the system needed to be rebooted in order for it to be added. The USB drive's right here. Now, I gave a little bit of a try, and you'll probably be seeing this. I don't know how much of it I'll include, but basically we tried and we tried to pass the drive through as a directory drive, and it doesn't show up here, and we're not able to type. And I also tried to go to data center, storage, add, and type in here the drive and see it stays red and we're not even able to do anything now or 
Actually, I got them upside down. And then you get, you can hit add, but you get an error message. And basically what I'm seeing or believe I'm seeing is there's no way to mount the drive in. So we're actually going to still have to use the command line method to mount this drive. So with that, let's go over here to PVE, go to our node itself, and we're gonna have to open shell. And with the shell, I've gone ahead and pulled up my blog, which I use for notes for a lot of this stuff. I uh, don't mount drives very often anymore these days, so I just feel that I might forget a step. So I'm going to follow along with my guide just to make sure that I don't miss a step. Uh, it's been over probably a year since I've done it last. So let's first make a directory and I want to keep everything fairly uh, consistent so I'm actually gonna mount this as disk 4 here in MNT PVE so mkdir dash p t dash pve disk 4 and that makes the drive now know if we need to do this but I'm gonna do it we're gonna run a ch mod 777 on this folder to make sure that we don't have any priority issues. Now this probably isn't the best way to do this. We probably want to actually assign it to an owner. And the root owner that we're actually creating this under might be fine for Proxmox. I'm not entirely sure here. So we might be biting off our foot. Go ahead and drop a comment below if you actually know. Uh, again, this channel's about teaching and learning and it would be great to learn from one of you guys that may have a little bit more experience with this than I do. So there we go. Now looks like we're going to edit in the FS tab file. I'm going to have to go back to my blog and fix that one. That isn't good. As you saw there, I have a typo in this blog. The E and the C are inversed. So now we're gonna add this line here. Okay, so it was at this point that I realized that I necessarily didn't have the right directions that I was using. And the directions that I was looking to use were designed for a hard drive or mountable disk with a drive label. And I didn't have a drive label created on this because of the way we created it with Proxmox. So I had to go back out to the internet after finding out that I didn't have any notes in my personal files about this and actually look up a directions for mounting a disk without a drive label using the dev slash SD name. So that's the process that you see me finishing up this video using. Okay, so it looks like I actually didn't have many notes on this, but I did end up doing a quick search on the internet. And let's try what the internet tells us to do. So let's go back to the FS tab, and it looks like we'll delete that label out, which actually makes sense. And save it. Now let's try doing this. Okay, so it looks like it did indeed mount the drive. So now we should just be able to come back to data center, storage, go to directory, give it an ID, and we're going to mount that here. It's going to be backup files, and let's click add. Now, if any luck comes in, this is going to be the file here, and it does look like there is indeed data on it, and there's our backup file. Now, I guess the last thing we need to do is try restarting the system and make sure that it comes back up with the system restarted, and then see if we can actually restore that file to make sure that we are indeed able to talk to that file. Now the chmod777 should make sure that we can, but let's see, let's run a test. So let's do this reboot. I'm gonna go back to the console, watch the console. All right, so we're up and running. Hit refresh, the disks are still coming up here. There's our disks all up, here's our USB. And let's highlight this. It looks like the USB is actually up and running and let's press restore and we want to storage we'll put it on LVM container ID is fine let's go ahead and try to restore it mm -hmm. so it does look like it restored and we were able to talk to the disk and get that working so I guess the last thing we need to do is try and remove this drive now I believe this is a multi-pronged approach because unlike 
being able to come up here to the node and select directory, select the drive, and then hit destroy like we did when we removed it from the R710 node to pass it through to this node. Um, we're not going to be able to do that because, again, it doesn't show up here because we manually mounted this with the command line interface. So I think what we're going to have to do is come up here to data center and storage. We're going to have to select USB and hit remove and hit yes. So now that should remove it from the Proxmox web interface. Then we're going to have to select the node and we're going to have to go to shell. I should be able to hit the up arrow at this point and go to FS tab. And we're going to have to come down here and we're going to have to delete this entire line out because if it stays in FS tab and it's not present, then the system itself will look for it and it'll freeze on the boot and won't continue to boot on. So we can hit yes and save it. Now we can come over here and simulate the drive being removed just by removing it from our hardware. So when we shut down and try to restart this time, it's in yellow, so we'll have to do a shutdown. But when we do our restart, everything should come back up and running. So let's go ahead and shut down this node. If we go over here, we should be able to, yeah, watching it shut down here. Should be almost shut down. There it goes. Now we can start it back up and we're running. And we didn't seem to have any problems with the USB drive missing. And just to show you that it's missing, we can come in here, it's not there. And if we go here to hardware, you notice it's not here in hardware. So we did successfully move, remove that drive from Proxmox. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and found it in informational. It is a little bit different than our standard structure and tested videos. It's a little bit more of playing around and learning about Proxmox a little bit and learning about this scenario. But um, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully you learned something from it as well as I did. So with that, have a good night.